And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we are going to continue our discussion on, discussion, excuse me, on parametric equations. And in this specific video, our goal is to graph parametric equations given a specific interval for the parameter. So let's go ahead and take a look first and foremost at a couple examples. What I want to do is I'm going to provide different uh, intervals, and then we're going to go ahead and kind of practice on our graphing calculators to graph these functions just because we get kind of warmed up in using parametric equations. So the first interval that I want to provide for us here is let's say, for instance, that we are saying that t is somewhere in between negative 3 and 1. So t is between negative 3 and a positive 1. So in our graphing calculators, this is where we're going to kind of keep our t min and our t max. All right, so t min and t max at negative 3 and at positive 1. So let's go ahead and take a look at our graphing calculator. So we've got our window set for, well, first and foremost, let's go to mode. Let's double check, right? Double check that you are in the parametric function, right? The parametric mode, all right, for our function. And then let's go ahead and go to our y equals. So our y equals is going to end up being those two equations. So we have x equals t squared minus 2 and y equals 3t. So let's go ahead and double check that those are set in there. So we have t squared minus 2 and we have the y equals 3t. And so that's going to be our parametric equations. So let's go ahead and double check our window. Our window, now we're going to have the t min at the lowest interval and the t max at the highest interval. And I'm just keeping the steps at 1 for now. I mean, technically, you could go a little bit less than that to see a little bit of a more intricate details. We're just getting some practice. And then for the x min and the x max, and then the y min and the y max, I'm just keeping them standard at negative 10, 10 for right now. So let's take a look at the graph, and you can see here that this is the function of it. And so again, you know, there's not, I'm not trying to solve for anything right now. I'm literally just trying to show you a little bit of the examples here. So as I kind of trace along through each of these, kind of see what's going on here, right? When t is negative 3, you can see that the result of throwing a, or substituting t in as negative 3 produces x is 7. And that makes sense. If you go up to our equation, right, negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 2 is, boom, 7, right? 3 times a negative 3 is negative 9. Boom, y is equal to negative 9. And so that's what we're really doing here, and that's what this curve is representing, is what is the x and y coordinate going to represent when t is a specific value, if you will, right? So when t is negative 3, and then we're going to go ahead and take a look at, well, what happens when t is negative 2, and then what happens when t is negative 1, and look what's happening down here. It's changing every single time. What happens when t is 0, so on and so forth to its maximum of a positive one. And then of course you can you can find out what any value is. You know, it doesn't have to just be the, the integers that I put in there. Let's take a look at just one more. So let's go ahead and let's say for this case, let's say our next one, I just want to go ahead and I want to utilize the same functions and we'll go ahead and just go ahead and make it from negative two to positive three this time. And again, all I want to do is just kind of show you a little bit as to what we are looking at when it changes up. So you're going to have your negative 2, and then we're going to go to a t max of a positive 3. We'll go ahead and keep the exact same parameters as, I should mean, the intervals um, for the x max and the y max as shown. And you can kind of see just a little bit of a, of a change in the graph, because now... It's the same function, it's the same parametric graph, but the curve is different because we are changing the parameters' intervals. So you are going to be producing different x and y coordinates. That's why we are looking at different graphs when we change up those intervals. But we're still using the same parametric equations, and when you throw in a negative 2, you're going to get 4 minus 2, you get a positive 2, and so on and so forth as you continue through all of those intervals.